registrar, would you please call the case? Good afternoon, Johannes. This is case number IT 0261A, Prosecutor versus Miroslav Deronic. Thank you, Registrar. I would call <coughs> for the appearances of the parties. Defense, please. Uh, Good afternoon, Your Honours. I am attorney at law, Slobodan Sietic. I appear on behalf of, of Mr. Miroslav Teranic, the appellant. Thank you, Mr. Sietic. Uh, uh, Sorry, oh, you did not have your phone. Uh, appearances of the prosecution, please. Good afternoon, Your Honours. Mark McKeon appearing for the prosecution, together with my co-counsel, Barbara Goy, and our case manager, Lords Galizia. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> As the registrar announced, the case on our agenda is prosecutor versus Miroslav Deronjic. In accordance with the scheduling order issued on 1 July 2005, today the appeals chamber will deliver its judgment on sentencing appeal in this case. Mr. Jerónczyk has appealed against the sentencing judgment rendered by Trial Chamber 2 of this International Tribunal on 30 March 2004. This case concerns events which took place in the village of Glogova in the Bratunak municipality in eastern Bosnia and Herzegovina in May 1992. Miroslav Deronczyk was then president of the Bratuna Crisis Staff and a member of the Serbian Democratic Party of Bosnia and Herzegovina. In the evening of 8 May 1992, he ordered an attack on the village of Glogova as part of his participation in a joint criminal enterprise, the objective of which was the permanent removal by force or other means of Bosnian Muslim inhabitants from the village of Glogova through the commission of the crime of persecutions. The village of Glogova was burned down in part and the Bosnian Muslim residents were forcibly displaced. As a result of this attack, 64 Muslim civilians from the village were killed, Bosnian Muslim homes, private property and the mosque were destroyed, and a substantial part of Glogova was razed. On 29 September 2003, the parties entered a plea agreement based on the second amended indictment and a separate factual basis. At the plea hearing held on 30 September 2003, the appellant pleaded guilty to the single charge of persecutions as set forth in the second amended indictment. In order to reconcile discrepancies that the trial chamber identified between the second amended, amended indictment and the factual basis filed by the parties, the trial chamber invited the parties to provide further clarification. During the sentencing hearing of 27 and 20 January 2004, the trial chamber entered a finding of guilt in relation to the charge of persecutions, a crime against humanity under Article 5H of the International Tribunal Statute. After a further review of the appellant's testimony, Given on 27 January 2004, the second amended indictment and the factual basis, the trial chamber found further material discrepancies and ordered a continuation of the sentencing hearing to be held on 5 March 2004 in order to verify that the appellant's guilty plea could still fulfill the prerequisites of Rule 62B of the rules. The appellant was held individually criminally responsible pursuant to Rule 7.1 of the statute, to Article 7.1 of the statute of the International Tribunal for his substantial participation as a co-perpetrator in a joint criminal enterprise. The trial chamber sentenced the appellant to 10 years of imprisonment, 
Judge Schomburg dissenting with credit for time already served in detention. <coughs> Following the practice of the International Tribunal, I will not read out the text of the judgment except for the disposition. Instead, I will summarize the issues on this appeal and the findings of the appeals chamber. I emphasize that this summary is not part of the written judgment, which is the only authoritative account of the appeals chamber's rulings and reasons. Copies of the written judgment will be made available to the parties and to the public at the conclusion of this hearing. I will not elaborate on the standard of review and appeal and the relevant provisions on sentencing since I have already addressed that during my opening statement at the appeal hearing. The appellant raises four grounds of appeal which I will address in turn. In his first ground of appeal, the appellant contends that the trial chamber erred in law and in fact and abused its discretion in reaching conclusions and findings which are based upon evidence not specifically contained in the second amended indictment, the plea agreement, or the factual basis. He refers to all these documents as the plea agreement package. In support of this contention, the appellant draws the attention of the appeals chamber to various paragraphs of the sentencing judgment which he claims are contradictory or contain errors of law or fact. The appeals chamber finds that the trial chamber appropriately and necessarily looked beyond the plea agreement package to other evidence as independent indicia in order to satisfy itself that there was a sufficient factual basis for the guilty plea. And the trial chamber's approach was consistent with Rule 62B's of the rules of procedure and evidence. In addition, the appeals chamber finds that the trial chamber did not err in determining the appellant's sentence by considering all relevant information it had before it. <coughs> With respect to the specific errors of law and fact alleged by the appellant under his first ground of appeal, the appeals chamber recalls that, in general, a trial chamber is not obliged to refer to every piece of evidence on the trial record in its judgment or to every submission made during the trial. If the evidence cited does not directly support the facts on, on, on which the trial chamber's challenged finding is based, the determination as to whether the trial chamber made an error must be considered on a case-by-case -case basis and in light of all the evidence before it. <coughs>